Welcome to another episode of Dial Town. I just hit record, so chat, say hello. I think that we better just get straight to it because I would love to see Oliver again, who's my favorite character. So, load a game. Don't mind the third file. I tried doing a different route, re like yesterday, because ah, my face. Hope we do it. All right, let's get back to Oliver's route. All right, you meant Flamingo Jail. Feast your eyes, Olive Man. The big house. You certain this is a good place to set your tragic past? You don't think captivity is tragic enough? It's kind of hard to be truly bummed out while sitting next to a tap tapir tapper. Do not feed the hairy ones. What is a tapir? Hold on, I'm looking that up. What is, what are they? Oh my gosh, that's hideous! Oh my god, that's the most disgusting creature I think I've ever seen in my entire life. Ugh. I think I found a new hate. I think I just found my 13th reason. Oh my gosh. That's horrific. Oh god, I feel like Wilbur soot when I look at an, like, when he looks at an anteater. Oh my god, kill it with fire. Ugh. Ugh, no, get that, no, why? Anyway. <clears throat> so you're telling me if you got excruciatingly that what? So you're telling me if you got excruciatingly bad news. Define excruciatingly bad. Let's say you find out your third pet rock was swept up in a tornado. Okay, that'd be absolutely heart wrenching. Continue. If you found out about this while outside the tapir enclosure. Would the mere presence of a nearby tapir really soften the blow that- the blow much? I- I think it hit once I'm out of wit- Bullshit, the tapir would do not to comfort you in- in- you in the- Theo Roar Russell Bell Adventurer What's this I hear? The roar of adventure, mayhaps? Oh god, not you. Emmy! My featherless bipedal green friend, you've returned at last. I have not returned. I merely came back to this location temporarily. You returned. Okay, yeah, I'm back. Bully to that then, I say. I- Hey, sorry to interject. Doting kind of boyfriend of Emmy here. He said it! He said the thing! Dwayne the Jock Rawson, please. Don't ever say those words again. Hydrate, chat. <sighs> water. I started putting lemon in water. Just to give it that extra spice. <laughs> How's it hanging? <clears throat> it gets another specimen. Hello, my equally featherless but decently less green friend. What brings you to my wonder sanctum of mis of miscellaneous beasts and other foul monstrosities today? Oh, nothing much, sir. <sighs> I'm just documenting Emmy. I need to pull up chat on my phone. Oh my gosh, I'm an idiot. I forgot to pull up chat on my phone. Hold on while I do that. Alright, y'all are pulled up on my phone. We're groovy. We're, pro <laughs> We're producing a groovy movie about her life together. My, what a thrilling notion. You know, Sonny, I'm, in a way, our goals were very much aligned. The sacred, the sacrifices we make, dedication, dedicating our very lives solely to documenting the most noble of beasts. So the public may know their terrible ferocity. Yeah, it's groovy. 
Very groovy. Yes. Bully to that. Oh god, they're mingling. You know what? I think it would be a truly stupendous idea, my lady. My, lady. my lad. Oh my god. Why, we should exchange information, comrade, to strengthen both of our doziers. Doziers. Hell yeah, that sounds gnarly. I'm sure you have... Oh, hell no. Nah. Oliver, you couldn't possibly fraternize with the enemy. Enemy? The mere sure, I am just a humble documentarian, not unlike your dear fezzed partner. And I must say, I do admire your choice in hatwear, my dear friend. Likewise, sir. Say, how'd you like to be in our in a, our film, Mr... Sorry, I didn't catch your name? You mean to say you haven't heard of me? I'm sure Oliver doesn't read Mustached Assholes Monthly, Theo. I've actually finished every issue from 1995 onwards, for your information. My boy, I am Theo, Theo Roar Russell Belt. Famed adventurer, explorer, and documentarian, and zoo master. And yes, I would simply adore the opportunity to appear in, a, in your film as a primary source of zoology hogwash. Yeah, this is development for sure. Say, for purely cinemata cinematographical reasons, do, do you have any baby photos of Emmy? I'm afraid Emmy was no longer juvenile when she found her way into our spurnful clutches. But, I do have some photos of her a au naturel. Theo, you wouldn't! Oh, that's hardly that scandalous. Emmy's naked right now. Wait, how long have I been- <laughs> Ah, drat. You're correct, my friend. That being said, you ought to see the angle I snapped in number four. The angle leaves very little to the, the braved imagination. M may I see the Oliver Award, please? <laughs> what is chat saying? I wish I had hydration source, but all we have is two liter. <laughs> have is a two liter in my brother backwashes. <laughs> That's disgusting. While you talk about that, I'm going to drink my lemon water. And crunch and munch on some ice. We do a little ASMR here. Anyway, back to the game. We'll be right back, okay? Do return, yes. I have yet to show you the photos of Emmy riding on her old tricycle, after all. They're so wonderful. They're so wonderfully ill-fitting. Tremendously cockable, yes. I would not like to see it. Experience the emu! That is something I would love to experience. I would love to experience the emu. What is their name? Fly, but it kicks ass. Say, are you doing okay? You kind of flipped your lid back there. Well, yeah, well, duh. You were chit-chatting with my former captor. Oh, right. Yeah, sorry. I realized how that might have just looked. But, hey. He said he wants to be in the movie. Isn't that if you put him in it, I walk? Unless you, like, put devil horns on him and dub his footage to make him say dumb shit. You know, that does give me a groovy segue into the golden question. The golden question? Well, yeah. We gotta consider villainy. <laughs> Are you saying we have to consider a life of crime? I'm flattered, but I doubt I have it in me to be a supervillain. The mental image of you prancing out of the cape? Ooh, oh, sorry. The mental image of you prancing around in a cape doing nefarious deeds is really groovy to picture, but no, that's not what I meant. What I meant to ask was, is our movie going to have some kind of maniacal villain? Don't most stories have villains? Yeah, I mean... 
most successful stories tend to have some kind of hurdle for the protagonist to overcome, you know? There's very sel- there's- bleh. There's very seldom character development to be had in here loafing around vegetating in trash after all. <laughs> That's me! That's my life! Let's just film me doing that! Aw, oh, don't you wanna hold- wanna join me in the trash? You know, hold my hand? <laughs> okay, maybe that can't be an entire scene, but I could squeeze it, it in somehow to excuse us shooting it, maybe. HA! Yay! But, does that truly sound like the making of a compelling story to you? Hmm, maybe I gotta overcome something first. So my debauchery feels deserved, or even earned. You might just be honest something. Well, what's the alternative? Oh wait, I have gummies. Yes, gummies! Fruit gummies! Well, back in the villain train, it is a fact that almost every story has a grand antagonist of some kind. Yeah, take anime for example. All action comedies have bad guys, after all. That must be it, then. After all, action comedy is the RC genre. RC genre. I'm telling you, all great stories have antagonists. Right. Most real-world love stories feature mother-in-laws. Yeah, now you're getting it. What you need is a nemesis. Who could that be? Well, wouldn't Thea Roar seem like an obvious candidate? Nah, I don't want him in my story at all. I don't know, man. Ground yourself. Think about how hammy that dude is. I'm sorry, I'm looking at the guy at Oliver's hand right now. It just looks so weird. Now, why, why is his thumb so long? Oh my god, you see that? Bro, what the fuck? It looks so weird. I'm gonna take a drink of my lemon water. Hydration is important, kitties. Very important. Think about how handy that is, dude. The dude is. He'd bring a lot of gnarly energy to the world. I am yawning all the time today. Oh my gosh. And give him the satisfaction? Hard task. Well, alright. You pit- Well, alright. You pitch a villain, then. Who do you see as the villain of your story? Uh... Take it, Jerry! <laughs> uh, little Billy, maybe? Like, what about you? Okay. I'm saving this because I actually. Why not? Over at the side. Okay. What does that say? Possible what? Discussing possible moves again. Okay. Take it, Jerry! Jerry? Seriously? H him? Yeah! <laughs> We'd love a good Marble, get out! <laughs> he always cocks blocks me when I try to enter the fun fair. Getting custody visits. Getting custody visits to see my hatchling is go gonna be a nightmare. But, I mean, is Jerry really the de facto, the de facto villain of your personal story? He's kind of just a poor dude who's trying to do the one task that helps him put bread on the table. He thwart- He thwarts me, Oliver! He's a thwarter, dammit! I'm sure he doesn't exactly relish in that, though. God, I really love thwarting him. I don't know, in my head he's pretty thwarty. Salutations! Might you need some assistance? Fuck off. No! <laughs> We've got it all under control, Theo. Pearl finds self from our proximity, thanks. Righto, bully to that then. <laughs> no! We don't need your help. I say, we just have you prant- I say we just have you prance around in spandex and call it a day. Okay, that's a deal breaker. Why? What's wrong with spandex? You do not want to see how the first incarnation of this movie turned out. This is your second attempt at, at this? That sounds like something you should have mentioned sooner. I was hoping that if I pretended it never happened, eventually I'd just forget. 
I can still hear the stretching of spandex <laughs> in my nightmares. Ah, sorry to hear that. In mine, it's just the familiar screams. Far less emotionally complicated. Ah, hell, maybe this is pointless. I mean, can we really reduce the struggle depicted in a complex narrative down to a single antagonist? What if the true villain was society? I'm not sure that a film we're trying to market to the general public should be about how unpleasant the target audience is. No, no, no. Hear me out. Maybe it's people's percep perception of me. I can't see it because of me, of course. And you can't see it because it's a view you don't happen to share. Huh. Maybe you're right. You think we need some complicated... I should not read that. Fuck it. I'll just start the movie with a paragraph of Comic Sans text on a solid color background. With the, expo the exposition out of the way, we can just focus on the action-y action stuff. Ooh, see, there's the issue. Define action, because technically decomposing is an action. Let's say general movement slash activity. Yeah, no, nah, that's not me. Oh, come on. Surely there's some way you can use this groovy... Oh! What we need is the footage of your daring escape. It's the ideal action narrative point. The missing link. How's about we ask Theo for the CCP TV footage? Firstly, let's never speak to him again. That's my suggestion. Right. And secondly? I might have co coated the lens of the nearest camera to my enclosure with a silly putty. A silly putty. What? Why did you? To cover my tracks, of course. Oh, right. Duh. Didn't Theo notice that you were missing, though? Nah, I just left a burlap sack of potatoes in my bed. Wow. This place really is. Sneaky lemur or a particular crafty dingo could get out of here, no problem. Where do you think I got the idea? Huh? Okay, so crazy suggestion here. What if you entered one of the nearby enclosures and I just filmed you climbing out all willy-nilly? We could totally just slap a camera over overlay onto it, pass that off as your actual daring escape. Wouldn't that be fake, though? You realize that almost every movie is just people lying on camera, right? Would audiences believe our forgery, though? Would audiences believe anything we filmed so far? Right, so let's do this. We live in a society. No. No, don't ever say those words again. Right, excellent. So, to our left, the noble alpaca enclosure. Sounds good to you? Uh, pretty sure alpacas are... Don't they fit? Are, are alpacas friendly? I don't know. I've never been lost in the mountains of Peru. And they don't tend to walk around the city much. You are ill-experienced when it comes to handling alpacas. Yeah, it's definitely a skill I tend to embellish on my resume. Alright, so what's in front of us then? An emu. Judging from the cardboard cutout, emu. Right, that is not ideal. I've been closer to an emu than I have an alpaca, admittedly. They're kind of like feathered ding dinos. Swans are also feathered dinos, in fairness. Right, but imagine a man-sized swan with a gun for a head. Right, I've heard enough. We were fools for thinking to weaponize them. If another emu war kicks off, we'll be annihilated. Ooh. Ooh. Let me save. Save. Emu! <laughs> Alright, it's time to make the plunge. No, door is now emu proof as of as of five, seven, fifteen. Never again. I even rolled dial town logo. Alright, I've made contact with the soil. I seem to be in some uncharted land. A new frontier. 
You're in the emo enclosure. Yes. You getting this? <laughs> emu exhibit. Only enter if you're cool with emus. Yeah, you look not generally lost. Outstanding, yes. What now? Well, if this is your daring escape, I guess the next step for, for you to take is to, you know, escape. Right. Ah, uh, how do I do that? Well, oh, right. It's the ground dips, don't it? Well, y yeah, of course, it's steeper on the inside. If I could climb out from, from the inside, an emu could jump it, no problem. This is certainly a mild predicament. I could just open the zookeeper door and let you out. That wouldn't look very cinematic. Alpacas are terrifying. Okay. Does any of this? Alright, point made. Now, let me out. God. Oh god, it has a rifle for a head. Oliver! Oliver, are you getting this? If the this is the emo that's now located right before you, then yes, I'm very much getting this. Oliver, am I in danger? <laughs> Do you think it's aggressive? Hold on, I'm gonna turn down my microphone audio because I can see it going into the yellow. Let me repeat this line. Oliver, do you think it's aggressive? I'm gonna turn it down again. Bloop, there we go. Do you think it's aggressive? I think it's an emu. Oliver, this is no joke. Need I remind you of the great emu war? Emus have won 100% of all wars they fought with mankind. One, one war, and they kicked our asses. This one has a gun. It seems docile enough. War. War seldom changes, says man. Alright, alright. I'll get the gate open in a moment. Oh god, it's just standing there menacingly. I somehow doubt that emus are capable of malicious shit. Oliver, I think it's attempting to trap me here. You could step around it. I, Oliver, I think the emu is working with the Aurora. Dude, just step around. Oliver, I must duel for my freedom. Hold on, hold on. Right. Camera in focus. Do what you have to. Well, you punched an emu. And I do it again in a heartbeat. <laughs> I love this game. <laughs> I mean, yeah, groovy. This is good stuff. Dude, this footage is top notch. This is totally the last piece of footage we needed. Our ace in the hole. You really think so? I mean, it might be kind of hard to portray the footage as a heroic moment since the raw footage is just heartbreaking footage of you assaulting a massive but docile cotton ball of legs. But I'm sure with a few jump cuts, some borrowed shots from Stanley Pop to aggravate emus, I can string some something compelling together. So, that's it. Yeah, I think we're done here. To be frank, I'm a bit worried that Fear War Russell Bell might be might press charges against us, considering you just assaulted one of his specimens. Oh, please. He loves punching animals. I'm sure he punches emus constantly. Fucking invite him to the premiere. He'd adore this trash. Right. Right. Okay, I guess that's one guaranteed patron for opening night. Man, am I pumped to get this movie finished. Absolutely heckin'-lay stoked. I gotta get back to the cinema. Cinema, get to editing this for tomorrow night. I am not gonna be getting any sleep tonight. But, hey! I'm sure if I go long enough without sleep, I'll... I'll be too out of it to feel the impending sting of failure, right? <coughs> hey, before you go, I want to ask you something. Oh, shoot. What's on the card, my groovy dude? So the cinema must, like, definitely haunted, right? Allegedly definitely haunted, yeah. Why? Has anyone ever, uh, died in the building during its operation? Oh. Now you mention it, 
Yeah, there might have been an incident or two. Nothing out of the ordinary, though. Uh-huh. Big Bertha might have flattened the last projectionist who performed maintenance on her. Flattened? Rolled right over him, yeah. Turned him into a red pancake. That's... Wait, did you say incident or two? Like, plural? Yeah, Big Bertha also kind of tore another maintenance guy's arms off. Then flattened him when that didn't kill him. When in doubt, flatten the repair guy, as they say. Who says that? Who says that, Oliver? There was also the time Big Bertha rolled through the rolled through the window out of the flattened some of the audience. Rolled right over him. Oliver, I am horrified. That doesn't sound right. Hey now, Big Bertha's our pride and joy. Mr. Dickens did right, splurging on a beautiful second-hand antique projector. Second-hand? Who sold him the machine? A friendly witch doctor who was hosting a yard sale to do the cinema is 100% haunted. In your opinion, it is definitely haunted. Let's just agree to disagree. No, let, let's not. Right. Then, I'll be off. Oh. Parting is such sweet sorrow. But hey, I'll see you at the premiere tomorrow. Right? Only if you'll be there. <laughs> if I'm not present, then I presumably died of a tragic but sudden caffeine overdose. If such as an event occurs, please mail my ashes to Obama in accordance with my last will and testament. Why him? I don't want to lose a bet. All right, then I'll see you tomorrow, Ash Boy. And with that, boy, what a day! You punched a goddamn emu. I did it for all of our damn it, for cinema itself. I mean, did you though? Did you really? And that's and what's that supposed to mean, bub? I mean, are you really certain that this movie is gonna achieve anything other than being a resounding flop? Well, Oliver has faith in it, so, you know, I do too. Oliver also has complete faith in the quality cinema he works at, in fairness. Faith is good, though. Religion has been historically kind of popular. He's relying on a miracle, though. It's blind faith. I get that... I get that the air in that place is practically opaque, but he doesn't seem to see any further than his own dial pad. But he's not doing this for himself. He's doing it for this Mr. Dickens. Do you think that Mr. Dickens really believes in Oliver? I'm sure he does, I mean. He's given Oliver so much, right? Right, so it's completely in character for him to indulge Oliver and give him a last-ditch attempt to save the cinema, knowing he'll lose nothing for the, if the movie flops. I'm sure Mr. Dickens just doesn't want the heart, doesn't have the heart to tell Oliver that it's pointless. Alright, you disembodied destroyer of dreams. What's your point then, eh? What do you want me to do? I don't know. Maybe try to tempt Oliver's expectations at the premiere tomorrow? You, you can let him down gently so he has time to come to terms with his inevitable failure. Sounds like a bummer. Nah, I don't think I'm going to do that. Is that... Is that the right thing to do? That sounds like a bummer. I know your entire life philosophy can be summarized as an irresponsible and effortless yet hedonistic romp in the pursuit of pleasure. What do those big words mean? It means you're cosmically un underwhelming. Oh yeah, no, I totally am. And your point? My point is, I think you need to ground Oliver. Ground him? What am I, his mom? Has he or has he not called you hot mama at least once? Ah, balls. This is bullshit. I've been set up. Obama has just a room for ashes. America. God, someone else bless America. What if no one wants to? Yeah. You really should have a discussion with him about the first movie. Remind him of his other prospects that everything will be okay when, if the movie flops on account of it being weird and low budget. Ah. 
That's the use. Go to sleep. You'll blow up. Yeah. You can think some more about this tomorrow. I agree with that sentiment fully. Minus the thinking made a bit. Good night, my ethereal maiden. Wait, I I'm not a girl. Yes. With that being said, I'm gonna. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm going to get into that next week. Or not next week. Alright, I'm going to end the stream here. And I will let, just let you all know who is attending right now. I will not be streaming tomorrow. Or the rest of next week. I will be streaming again on pro probably around the 21st. Or around that week. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a good day. Uh, yeah. Signing out. Bye!